And so we have all of the Git history of all these projects, even though he deleted everything off of the web. So uh, a number of us decided that his stuff was important enough that we would continue to take it along. And he was so prolific that pretty much everyone picked one of his projects, and almost no one was able to like, continue moving them forward. Uh, you know, it, like the work of one man literally was not able to be held by the rest of the Ruby community put together. Uh, that is how awesome Y was. Uh, but uh, I quit my startup to work on this project because I cared about it that much. Um, and so basically, here's, here's sort of the example of what it looks like. I will show you uh, in a minute. But basically, you get uh, to type stuff in. You click the Run button. It actually embeds its own copy of Ruby so that you don't need to download or install anything else whatsoever. You just have it all in one, native on Mac, Windows, and Linux. And uh, it comes with uh, integration with a website. So you can actually like ask questions um, on the site, which I've been gone, so none of them have any answers. But you sort of have a little Stack Overflow built in, as well as uh, lessons are actually in Markdown. So they're, they're in interpreted by the program to create the in-program lessons, but also then the website depends on them as well. So you get them rendered on the website, and you can uh, read and learn how those things work. And then there's also essentially a mini GitHub where you're able to upload your programs to the web, and other people are able to see them and fork them and uh, run them, et cetera. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in that world. Um, primarily, I guess one of, the, one of the reasons that I was asked to talk to you guys about this today is that um, one of the cool things about Hackity and one of the reasons I, I like it so much is that it is specifically uh, accessible to everyone, including children. So I actually uh, volunteer. I live in Los Angeles, but I volunteer with an organization in New York City called Code Now. And uh, basically, we teach uh, children how to program uh, via two, two days, uh, one day of Hackity Hack and one day of what used to be Lego Mindstorms and is now Arduinos, um, to sort of give them a taste of hardware and software. So um, all of these kids come from uh, homes that have uh, uh, reduced price lunches, which basically means they live at or below the poverty line. Um, and uh, they basically take a weekend out of their time to show up, um, in this case, at Pivotal's lab, Pivotal Labs, a host that us last time. Um, at their office in Union Square, and we all get together and have some fun and write some little programs uh, together. So it's pretty awesome um, in general, and uh, you know they continue to learn stuff elsewhere. They have like accounts on Treehouse and whatever. Um, but this is sort of the idea is that like programming is something that everyone should do, and I, I feel very strongly that programming is a literacy issue. Um, as more and more of our world is reliant on technology to you know on a basic level, uh, it's more and more important that we all know at least how it interacts. I don't think that everyone will be a programmer, but I think that everyone should at least know how programs work and how programming works. Um, I was talking with somebody earlier. We were joking about Bitcoin. And I was saying how if someone invents a way to factor uh, large primes in polynomial time, our entire universe at this point would like fall apart, right? Like all security, all banking, all cryptography would all be gone, right? And I don't think that most people appreciate how precarious of a situation we are with many regards of technology, right? So, uh, you know, we all love building things on the web, but my friends are operating systems PhDs. And uh, what's funny is they're not web programmers because they think it's too hard, so they write operating systems instead. Um, <laughs> my friend is like, HTML and CSS, screw that. I'm writing schedulers. Um, and, you know, so, like, to each their own or whatever. But the point is, is that, like, I think that it's really, really important that we share programming with the rest of the world. And also, uh, the flip side is that we learn from the rest of the world and bring that into programming. So you can see that in all the rest of my conference talks uh, where I ramble about philosophy forever. Um, but so yeah, CodeNow is really cool. One of the other things that's really interesting that spawned out of Hackity Hack is a sister project called Shoes. So basically, this is the, the GUI integration. So what happened was Y realized when he was writing Hackity Hack that hey, cross-platform GUI toolkits are actually kind of terrible. And so since I'm sort of building my own inside this project, I should split it out into a separate project so that other people that want to build um, desktop applications can do so as well. And so um, Shoes is its name. Uh, it's got this sweet little logo of some sneakers, which is sort of off the screen at the moment. Yeah, there you go. Um, but basically, you 
you can sort of see this. Uh, this is an example program that brings up this particular GUI. So sort of, I guess, a little small on the screen. I'll show you actual text later. But basically, um, one of the reasons why I care a lot about Hackney and Shoes is that Shoes is the only GUI library that I've ever used that does not make me want to hate myself. Um, it is. It does. It uses Ruby's blocks to great effect, um, and so uh, to to do you know callback oriented things, which you are all very familiar with how that, that stuff works, uh, and um, it's just it's just really awesome. Um, so what's unfortunate is that when you have an absent creator who's disappeared and who is incredibly. Uh, so one of the things that Y thought very specifically was that testing destroys creativity, and you should not write tests for your software if you're trying to be creative. Um, that is a problem that I have been spending the last years of my life paying off the technical debt that was created by him being creative. Um, <laughs> like, literally, when I took over this project, it took me six months to compile shoes. The first time I ever got it, it was not compilable because I bought the predecessor to this machine, a MacBook Pro, and it had Snow Leopard on it, and Shoes was still implemented in Carbon, which if you remember, uh, Mac OS uh, Snow Leopard was the one that removed Carbon, so I did not have a machine that could actually compile it and needed to not just like figure out how to make it work on my machine, but then also port it to Coco without being able to compile at any time during the port until it was done. Um, and that was my like introduction to building this. So it was non-trivial to say the least. And building one nine one, which is a previous, we remember is a horrible release that has terrible, terrible things. And so um, I spent uh, a year trying to get it to work on one nine two, and a year trying to get it to work on one nine three. And I managed to get it to work on one nine three for Mac and Linux, but not Windows, um, including pairing with multiple members of Ruby Core, uh, trying to get it to work. Um, so it's a little complicated. So what we what we're basically doing is rewriting shoes. Essentially, is what I'm trying to tell you. So uh, we actually just had a. Uh, this is so big now. Uh, whatever that doesn't want to shrink for me. So um, we basically have decided to rebuild this in JRuby and the JVM because all this platform specific stuff is very hard and complicated. And unlike why the Lucky Stiff, we are four or five people instead of one superhuman person. So uh, <laughs> we're we're punting to JRuby, uh, and um, we are almost at the point now where we have an actual uh, successor release. So um, upon the release of Shoes 4.0. I will then proceed to like rewrite Hackity on top of Shoes 4.0, and it will move forward and be awesome, and the technical debt will all finally be paid off. But in the meantime, um, it is a, a while it is uh, frustrating to inherit a code base with an absent creator, it is also fantastic that like children are learning how to program in Ruby, um, and also learning to program, I should say. Um, I uh, am interested in, I've been doing a lot with Rust, actually. Uh, so, like, I don't believe that we should indoctrinate children into programming in Ruby. I think that they should learn programming. I happen to think that Ruby is a very good first language to learn programming in. So, um, anyway, let me sh give you the tour real quick, and then I will get off the stage and let the next person talk about the real-time web. Um, so, oh well, I mean, you know, close enough. So uh, this is what happens when you uh, when you start up Hackity, uh, and basically uh, you get the uh, selection of like programs. You get uh, these lessons. So for example, it sort of brings up this little thing on the side, and you can click through, uh, and it will explain to you um, all sorts of stuff. I actually uh, implemented Logo as a Ruby DSL. So in the first lesson, you're actually programming in Logo. But it's secretly Ruby, but we just don't tell you. We're like, hey, you can move the turtle around, um, if any of you remember a logo, uh, which I do fondly. Um, I'm secretly a really old man trapped in a younger man's body. Um, so I was like, logo, it's amazing. And people were like, how do you know what logo is? Um, you know. So uh, And then um, basically, so you can move and do stuff in the editor over here while you like copy stuff. One of the funny things about teaching uh, beginners right, is that and especially kids who have grown up with computers, is they get really mad at me because they cannot copy and paste this code over into the editor. 
um, you know, which is kind of fun. And actually, that's one of the really interesting things about Wise writing about programming was that he actually hand wrote out a lot of code samples. And when people like asked, they thought it was an artsy thing. But one of the things he also said was that like that way you're forced to type it in. Uh, actually, programming things. Um, so, which you see in many other people, like Zed Shaw, for example, and learned in uh, learn Python the hard way. It's like. Anyway, I'm going to close this room and show you uh, super briefly how awesome the Shoes DSL is. So basically, um, do, uh, do end. Uh, and then this is sort of small. Can you guys even see this really well? Yeah. OK, sweet. Um, and then this is like the example that made me freaking love Shoes entirely. So you say button, uh, push me, do, alert. Hi there, end. Now, this may seem like a trivial to alert. Hi there, everything because it does bind to the uh, Mac API, uh, Coco, and the Windows API. But if you have ever tried to do this another GUI toolkit, this is like, oh, this is so trivial. Why would you do this? But it is so complex and everything else because of their own legacy baggage and like back and forth on design APIs or whatever. Uh, at one point for fun. And the um, the background color method is so you can give things a gradient. So like if I want this to have a, a background gradient, I can say uh, Background, and then uh, like hash ff hash o o o. I think that's what it is, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and this will give you a gradient. So you just say like, I would like a range of these hex colors, please. To implement that one line method in Qt is forty five lines of uh, C or Ruby, the Ruby bindings, if you want. So it's like a super big leap forward in terms of like the interface uh, design to do these kinds of things. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I really, really um, enjoy it so much and think that it's like really useful for kids. I ship a, um, a uh, version of Pong um, with this uh, that is like 60 lines of code. You can write Pong or whatever. Um, so anyway, so this is sort of one of the things that I do in my spare time is uh, hack on all this stuff. And like I said, we're prepping for a release. So if any of you do know Ruby and want to help, uh, we would love to have you uh, help. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for you. So thanks.